Welcome. Welcome to That's Good Sports. I'm Brandon. I forgot how good it feels to beat the fucking Chargers, Perna. The officials in this game were horrible. They nearly robbed the Broncos of a victory. Vance left more points on the field and didn't know to challenge a two-point play. But it's all all right, because at the end of the day, we got to see Philip Rivers make his disappointment face. We got to see him make his, are my lips squeezed tight enough? Where they look indistinguishable from a butthole face? Yes, they are, Phil. Yes, they are. I picked the Broncos to lose today, mostly because I thought with all of the injuries on the offensive line that bad things were going to happen. But from left to right, Bowles, Turner, McGovern, Wilkinson, and Veldeer, they played pretty damn good football. So good, I'm going to give them, you know what's coming, a big dick player award. The highest honor for any man to receive in any situation. From start to finish, they were the most consistent unit on the field. Enjoy it, offensive line. Enjoy that big dick as much as you can. No questions asked. Now let's be review the Broncos Chargers game. Give me those good, good intros. Yes, it's still through. Fuck you, Chargers. <laughs> let's go Broncos. Please, if you're new here to this channel, especially if you're a Broncos fan, subscribe, click the notification button if you're already subbed here, or YouTube will try to dick me out of views. Also, I have big dick Patreon shout outs for Brandon Perna took my Patreon virginity, Mustard Bus, Chris Williams, and Brandon Hoffman. Thank you guys for your money. I love your money. I love it. Patreon is how I make a living. If you want to support my channel, you can do it there. Patreon.com slash that's good sport. On to the game. Now it was a weird win for the Broncos. The pass rush was terrific. The run defense was solid. Pass coverage was terrible. The O-line was very good. The run game was brilliant. Well, pretty good. But the passing attack was horrible. I mean, Case Keenum entered the fourth quarter with 59 passing yards, but finished the game with 205 and a W. Now, I'll let Case enjoy this win and ignore the glaring problems I saw for the first three quarters. He deserves to bask in a victory like a hot ham on Sundays. Like, I won't even point out he missed an open Cortland Sutton on the first play, or how he ducks right into the pass rusher here, right into him, but luckily gets the ball away because the tight end just happens to be three feet from him, or how he did the exact same thing in the third quarter. I'm not going to say any of those things being negative about Case Keenum at all. I'm not going to do it. Now, all week, everybody said the Chargers can only beat bad teams. Which must mean the Broncos are now a good fucking team. Antonio Gates is so old the Chargers cut him this offseason, only to rescue him from a condo in Boca Raton so he could catch third down conversions like this. But after a holding penalty and a false start in the red zone, the Chargers settled for a field goal. With multiple red zone penalties, I think the Chargers should have also been flagged for stealing the Broncos offensive game plan. I did get a little nauseous seeing former Broncos uh, tight end, Virgil Green torching the defense for 36 yards. I think Green matched his receiving total for his entire career here in Denver on that one freaking play. Ian Eagle said Royce Freeman and Philip Lindsay have in-depth talks about life insurance. Well, Lindsay said he and Freeman get into some deep hey, conversations about life insurance. Which is funny. But if you know Dan Fouts, he will take a funny situation and make it lame faster than if your parents showed up to your first swingers party. Well, how about penalty insurance? What kind of insurance did they get, Dan? Well, how about penalty insurance? You know what really happens when your parents show up to your first orgy? The hole closed up quickly. That could be painful. That's right. Leave. Go home. There will be no... The double team. Nobody's going to get... Laid. Definitely nobody's going to get... The lick. The lick is why you go in the first place. Now, okay, I do... I do need to credit Mike Kliss for being 100% correct about Wad Mania. Mania, mania. It might actually be real. Colby Wadman completes the fake punt with a pass to Jano. Andy Manovich gets Wad Mania to blow everywhere with a 12-yard play. 
the biggest gain of the game for the Broncos at that point. Philip Lindsay was feeling full of wad mania as well, and on the next play shuts off the circuit breaker, making those electric bolts disappear on this 41-yard touchdown run. Suck it, Austin Eckler. This is what you get for abandoning Colorado. After what happened last week to the Chargers, I'd say they are the worst team in human history at defending fake punts. And then Philip Rivers came to the rescue, bobbling a perfectly good snap which forces him to throw a shitty pass to the sideline where Chris, you're so lucky I'm still a Bronco, Harris Jr. picks off Rivers with ease. The Broncos red zoned themselves by going for it on fourth and one after getting stuffed on third and two only to get stuffed again, even though Lindsey may have gotten it. Vance Joseph walked away from an easy three points. And I really wish this surprised me. I wish this 30 plus yard screenplay and the secondary's inability to tackle also surprised me. I wish hearing Dan Fout say, it really looked like Lindsey picked up the first on that replay. Surprised they didn't overturn it, surprised me. I'm saying I love surprises and I'm getting none with this team. Except for the win. Ian Eagle did mention Pueblo. Pueblo. Anytime my former hometown is mentioned, I put it in the show. Pueblo, Pueblo, Pueblo. And like for most people, the word Pueblo is bad luck for citizens of Colorado as Tremaine Brock gets burned for a big gain down the sideline, which set up a very easy Phillip Rivers touchdown pass to Keenan Allen, who is literally covered by nobody. Just go ahead and put cornerback Gary Jackson on him. Gary Jackson is a guy I just made up and he was closer to stopping that touchdown then the Broncos secondary. I just complimented you, Chris Harris. What happened there? But before the half closed out, the defense, the defense held true. Von Miller sacked Phillip Rivers for the 16th time in his career, which is only double the amount of mouths to feed Phillip Rivers has at home. Boom, and we did it again. Every time I talk Chargers this season, I work in a Rivers fucks like a rabbit on Viagra joke. And the Broncos head into halftime 13 to seven. Seriously though, congratulations to Von Miller, who now has 100 career sacks, including the postseason. I don't know why you wouldn't include the postseason, but anyway, it becomes sweeter knowing he did it against Philip Rivers, who only needs one sack to produce 100 children. Oh my God, you thought I was done with those jokes, didn't you? Von has sacked Rivers more than any other NFL quarterback by far which is why we get a half time, 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 malfunction, a half time, balls back, sack attack, plus some picks to stick it to the bolts segment. Hello darkness, my old friend. I've come to sack you again. Because a defense that started creeping sacked your butt while your tears were streaming. Grab me a rivers. And in the naked light I saw Bradley Chubb was the final straw. And it echoed the sound of silence. Or the home crowd at a Chargers game. The sound of silence. Or the home crowd at a Chargers game. That's an original. Coming out of halftime, uh, there, is, there was some breaking news as Josie Jewell's ass is expected to try out for the Broncos secondary this offseason after it perfectly defended this pass. You might even say, The hole closed up quickly. On that one. But that was mute as a bullshit targeting or hitting a defenseless receiver penalty was called on Justin Simmons. It saved the assholes on the other side of the ball with Rivers throwing like his 1,000th touchdown to Antonio Gates after the penalty. I have to say that's not a defenseless receiver. When Plaxico Burris tried to represent himself in court after shooting himself in the leg, now that was a defenseless receiver. The Chargers had 120 penalty yards and the ref still noticeably nearly cost the Broncos the game. It was late in the third quarter. Things were looking very bleak, like season five of Game of Thrones, but then I have to credit CBS for cursing Philip Rivers with the classic, he's been perfect on third down today, eight of eight, setting up a textbook 
Why the fuck did you say that? Football play usually works best for kickers, but I will take a Rivers interception any day of the week. Von Miller with the catch and run basically wakes me up from the dead. From there, it was Philip Lindsay and Royce Freeman, or as I call them, life and insurance. Life insurance. Better pay up or they're gonna kill you with touchdowns. It was no offense, no offense, and no offense. Three quarters go by, and Keenum, again, 59 passing yards. And then, with the first play in the fourth quarter, Keenum nearly doubles his daily total with a beautiful pass to Cortland Sutton to put the Broncos in Chargers territory. Philip Lindsay, AKA Life. That's right, Royce is insurance. Phil is life, and he keeps the touchdown dream alive, converting a critical third and three. Life moved from running back to quarterback and basically did a Le'Veon Bell impersonation. No, not shitting on $14 million. Patiently, patiently waiting for his opportunity and then rushing in for an easy touchdown. Case Keenum comes in for the two point play. Gets the two points again, but the refs rule him short and the Broncos don't challenge the play, which makes me think the coaching staff screwed them out of five total points. Going for it on fourth instead of kicking a field goal earlier in the game and then this? In fairness to Vance, I think it's beyond stupid. Officials don't automatically review two point plays. You put your coaches in a weird pos position thinking they need to throw a challenge flag in those situations as the rule is all scoring plays are reviewed, but technically if you don't score on a two point play, it's not a scoring play. Even though it's a play for a score, it's confusing. However, Vance could have simply asked an official. Plenty of time to do that with a kickoff coming or somebody, at least one fucking person on the Broncos staff needs to know that rule. That's inexcusable. Anyway, I'm not, I'm not in lost mode. I am not in lost mode, despite that. Despite everything feeling ominous, I knew the game was in the Broncos' favor when we got this long shot of Phillip Rivers just staring into the camera probably remembering each and every one of Von Miller's 16 sacks. That look only happens when he is ready to lose, or he's thinking about how much Christmas will cost him this year. God damn it, I just can't stop. The Chargers bounce back with the field goal to take the lead. Could Keenum lead a game-winning drive? Keenum failed on attempt one, but Chubb, Chubb came to the rescue. Rivers got chubbed when he tries to hand the ball off to Ladanian Tomlinson, which obviously didn't work because LT re retired years ago, Phil. This was huge because the Chargers drive stalled here. It gave the Broncos a chance to win the game. That was the wrong decision. Emmanuel Sanders opened our hearts back up like a drunk cardiologist who slips with the knife with the big dig gain down the middle of the field. And even though the officials have fucking officials trying to break an already broken Broncos team by calling offensive pass interference on Tim Patrick. OPI here, refs? Really with the game on the line? Well, good thing you can't break the broken, which I think is a good Charlotte song. But Cortland Sutton came in, saved the day. Thank you, Cortland. Uh, please see life and insurance to up your policy. You're gonna wanna get flood coverage after damming up rivers. Brandon McManus made up for his miss against the Texans with the final gooch blast. Well, he had to do it twice to get the win and send the Chargers back to the home that they don't really have with the loss. And that's how you grind out a win, Broncos. Same thing you've done pretty much every game this year, but with points at the end of the game. That's the difference. You just got to score at the end. Make sure you come back tomorrow for my weekly recap of all of Sunday football. And it just feels good to get a win again, doesn't it? Can we enjoy that for the week on Thanksgiving? Be thankful for this fucking wind is what Benedict Cumberbatch said to the pilgrims when he landed at Casterly Rock. That was the wrong Pueblo ah, life insurance. Thanks for watching That's Good Sports. Please subscribe here. I'm on Twitter at Brandon Perna, Instagram at Brandon Perna. Will Keys and I do a podcast every week, Broncos fans. That's Good Sports podcasts on iTunes, Podbean, and my second channel. Check it out there, That's Good Podcasts. And I whispered the sound of silence. <laughs>